Hi there, this is Tim with a video of my recent PC build. Now I'm not uh, by any stretch of the imagination an expert PC builder or anything like that, but when I need to do an upgrade I do it myself and one of the reasons I'm making this video is because I always see people that uh, feel like they can't really do a PC build and I'm just making this to show you the basic steps that it actually is and that most of what you buy actually has included the things that you'll need to install it and that mostly it's just logic that's actually needed to uh, do a PC build. Now this is the case that I bought, brand new case, it's a Rosewill Rise case. Um, lots of ventilation which is important for a PC, keep it nice and cool. You can see there's drive bays on the front, uh, expansion bays on the back, fans on the front and back, and uh, pretty much all PC builds will have some kind of screw on the back that allows you to remove the panels on both sides. So. That's me removing that one, and you can see the inside of the case now, and the the main board actually uh, kind of bolts onto the back there. There is kind of a little window where you can get to the back of the CPU, and I'll show you why that's important later. There's drive bays at the bottom right, and um, obviously a gap for the power supply at the bottom left. There's those drive bays. Obviously at the top right is for the uh, DVD drive to slot into and uh, the case comes with a couple of cable ties and an awful lot of screws and the USB ports and things that you saw on the outside of the case on the top those come through to uh, all of those cables that are kind of bundled at the bottom left. So a quick look at the manual just to check out the features and then we bring out our main board also known as a motherboard. You'll see this abbreviated to MOBO quite a bit and this obviously comes with everything that's needed for it the IO shield is what that's called uh, various cables for hard drives and uh, basically everything else that I needed first thing to do is to fit the IO shield which will kind of click into place in the back of the case and obviously make sure it's the right way around so that when you lay the main board into the case it uh, fits in. Now the IO shield kind of springs the motherboard back so you'll see you actually have to push it to align it with its uh, screw holes and you can see there's actually the screw holes in various places. What I normally do is I normally put this one in first then just kind of push the motherboard over a bit to put in the other screws. Once the, the main board is attached, you can uh, see about fitting other things. And the first thing that I'm looking at is the fans that are actually already in my case. You can see there, number three is fans. So you, you can actually see number three in a lot of different places, but you can see chassis fan, CHA fan. That's what I'm actually looking for, for the rear fan. You can see other ones, there's another chassis fan 3 there, and um, chassis fan and CPU fans right up there in the center of the screen now. So this, uh, this board has a lot of uh, power outlets for uh, fans. And you can see the fan on the back of the case there, it has a 3-pin uh, um, plug that uh, I'm going to put on this socket and you can see various places where the chassis fan is kind of towards the right of screen there you have external fan slots but the one I'm going to use is right next to the fan itself and you can just see CHA FA and you can see it's got like a little notch out of it which means that the um, the thing that I'm plugging in will only fit the way that it's supposed to because it also has two little notches coming out and that's the way that a lot of PC building is, is that you, in order to build it incorrectly, you would have to force it on, or you would have to force it the wrong way, because things just fit the right way. You can see there, the two little notches fit around the single notch that was connected. And now, you know, you just need to tidy up your cables. So what I did is I used a cable tie, 
and just um, kind of cabled that up and uh, put it securely next to the fan itself so that uh, it's out of the way. And then here we have the USB connection for the external USB um, ports that you uh, saw earlier on, on the top of the case. This is a USB 3 port or um, plug and obviously those go into various places on the motherboard. So we look at the manual again, we look for USB and uh, quite often it'll say front panel USB or um, something of that sort but here you can see number 14 USB 2.0 so we're looking for number 14 so you look in the manual number 14 right down at the bottom of the screen you have USB 1.1.1.2 and uh, look at them look at the board find those and there we go USB 1.1.1.2 and you can see there's, um, there's five pins across the top and then four across the bottom and on the bottom right there's actually a pin missing so like I said that's to ensure that you can't mess it up you know you you can't put this connector in the wrong way around because obviously the missing port which is at the bottom left here um, wouldn't allow you to do that so basically you just put it in the correct way around push it in there and it's the same here with this USB 3 you can see there's a little notch on the right hand side there and if you look at where it's going into you can see the notch is at the bottom so you put it the correct way around and push it on in there now here we have the HD audio that's for the um, speaker connection things like that and uh, you're looking for front panel audio and it's actually AAFP so AAFP on the board obviously there's a pin missing in the right place to make sure you don't screw it up and now we have these tiny little things that are really fiddly to do with one hand um, and I'm obviously holding the camera with the other one but you have plus and minus for the, H for the hard drive LEDs, the reset switch, power LEDs and the power switch so basically those go into um, what you can see numbered here as number 11 and uh, that's a front panel so basically we're looking for the right page and I think it's system panel connection which is 130 or page 130 so that's obviously what we're going to flick to in the manual here so there we go 130 that's the correct page and you can see it's got the the um, layout at the right hand side here it tells you where the plus and minus goes where it actually matters um, but what I tend to do is always have the writing facing the same direction um, once you've done one um, usually it's consistent that way so you just make sure you put the um, the hard drive LED plus and minus the way that that layout told you obviously pushing them over the right pins a little bit fiddly to do with one hand again so bear with me on on that uh, issue and there we go you can see when it's all finished you know they're all kind of sitting next to each other there's some that I'm not using and really it depends what case you buy or what um, you know motherboard you buy that whether those things will actually be used or not so uh, next thing I'm going to install the CPU so before I install the CPU which is the central processing unit I uh, want to check what I have to do with the heat sink which is something that keeps the CPU cool and obviously it comes with everything that's needed again it's not something that you have to uh, mess around with these days and I'm following the instructions for uh, 1155 which is the type of socket that this CPU uses so this is that's why I needed a window in the back of the case to be able to get to the back of the motherboard because I needed to put these uh, bolts through that I could screw these things onto if you uh, don't have that little window in the back then obviously you need to fit the rear bracket on before you attach the motherboard to the case 
So again, just following the instructions that are in the um, the heatsink, and then uh, stopped about halfway through and um, wanted to attach the CPU itself. A nice i7 uh, 2600K, I think I got. Yes, 2600K. And you can see what the uh, CPU looks like. And CPUs will only go in one way around. Um, I, I'll actually show you what it looks like when you put it in the wrong way around. It just doesn't go in. Um, so don't ever force a CPU to kind of sit down because it's just not going to do it. You can see there's uh, little notches um, at the top left and top right that fit um, this, the um, CPU. So that is now actually fitted correctly. And I'm going to show you what happens if you fit it incorrectly. It just kind of slides around on top. So there obviously, you know, it's the wrong way around and it, it just kind of slides around on top. None of the notches fit each other. So again, you know, it's just basic logic. If it's the right way around, then it's going to fit. If it's the wrong way around, it's not. And there you go. Absolutely snug. And you know, once once that's done, um, obviously I wipe my grease off with, with um, usually something like a kind of a paper towel. Um, but you have to get it so that the little um, the little screw is actually holding this bracket in place. Then it's it's actually pretty hard to snap this thing th down here and actually keep it tight. But uh, simple as that. And then uh, now I'm going back to the instructions here. I'm going to complete the um, the bracketing that the heatsink attaches to. Never kind of over tighten anything. Um, if you do that you can crack the main board, you can crack the motherboard itself. Nothing needs to be more than you know you can do with your fingers usually. And then here I'm applying some thermal paste to the CPU because the heatsink is going to sit on top of that and what you want is you want the heat from the CPU to be passed easily to the heatsink and the heatsink then kind of battles against that heat by blowing air onto the heatsink. Uh, taking that off so it's a nice clean connection with the, with the, uh, the thermal paste <laughs> Got to make sure I get it the right way around there. And you can see little screw holes that it's going into. And again, you know, don't over tighten. As long as there's a solid connection, um, that's what's important. Do not over tighten. So next, obviously, we need to work out where the fans are. And if you remember, um, that was number three. But... Um, First things first, let's get the memory in because I don't want the fans to be in the way when I'm trying to put the memory in. So you can see there's a two memory configuration and it's saying that they would go in the lighter of the um, of the four slots. If you had four, then you would obviously um, occupy all four. But if you have two, then the arrows are coming down in, into the lighter slots. So memory, this is the memory that I got, uh, 16 gigs of memory, pretty fast memory too. This is what it looks like and you can see it's got a notch in around the middle there. I'll show you why that's important. But uh, this is what memory looks like. Or RAM. Random access memory. So you can see if you look at the notch in the memory, it, um, the slot that I'm putting it into the little notch on the slot is in a different place. That means that this RAM is the wrong way around. So, when you're putting it in, you have to put it the right, the right way around. You can see that that notch is in the right place there. And basically, uh, you have these channels. Usually, you just kind of pull off one side there, and then it'll kind of fall into the channels on either side. You can see it pretty clearly there. And make sure the other end is in the channel. And then, as evenly as possible, just apply pressure to the top, and it'll 
give a nice audible click uh, and that um, the thing that you pulled back will usually kind of click into place just like that you hear that click there I hope um, and really that's it that's that's the memory installed now I'm putting these fans on there and obviously they have their own uh, power connector that um, is going to go actually around and up to the top right of the motherboard and you can see number three there you can see CPU fan and CPU optional and because I have two fans I'm going to be um, attaching them both you can see it's the same kind of connector as that rear fan was earlier the same as all of the number three connections on the motherboard in the manual and here I have my hard drive from my old machine a, uh, and it's going to go into that kind of holding bracket here so with that in there we're going to attach the cable that's the data cable the hard drive still needs a power cable which I'm going to do later so I'm just feeding this through here I actually ended up feeding it through that rubber kind of um, oval shape at the top right and then uh, putting it into the one that is clearly marked as the operating system drive and then here um, a few of my older drives they're going to go into these uh, caddies here that are really nice and easy to remove you just kind of squeeze them and slide them out difficult to do with one hand but there we go and there's no screws required you literally just kind of drop that drive in there and attach the data cable um, here you kind of pull off the front of the case and you can see there's there's a drive there's a drive slot in there for a uh, DVD um, you just need to take the uh, the plastic kind of cover off the front difficult to do with one hand but I'm showing you the clip on the on the right hand side of it there versus the left hand side the left hand side is um, not yet out and if you have a card reader like I do then obviously you need to make space for that as well um, usually there's something like this that you just kind of spin around and um, it'll give you a pretty good kind of bracket to uh, put that into and then basically you just put that stick into that hole uh, to reattach the front back onto your case and then you slide your drives into the appropriate slots and obviously you stop it from sliding backwards and forwards by putting screws into the, into the side of the drive you can actually see those right there next is the power supply now this is a power supply from my old uh, machine quite a nice power supply plenty of uh, power output and it has a fan on the bottom and one of the reasons that I quite like this case once everything's secured here is that it has these filters and as a house that has a Siberian Husky and another dog and uh, two cats I'm quite thankful of being able to uh, filter hair now power supplies come with various options here this is a 24 pin connector that you can split there's an 8 pin connector here that you can split these are power for drives these are power for graphics cards and uh, pretty much everything that you need is going to be here um, you know you, you just need to make sure that you buy the right one that has the right voltage that has the connections that you need so I've got the power plugged into the hard drives I'm plugging the power in here to the um, blu-ray writer that that I have and then this is the power for the main board even pressure and a nice audible click there when it's in when it's in position and then around the back here I did have to use that uh, 8 pin power connection as well now on my old computer I just needed one 4 pin so this motherboard is slightly different this is my older graphics card I'm actually um, I've, I've actually purchased a GTX 1080 uh, which will be my new gra new graphics card but for now this is what I have a GTX 970 and it's going to go into the PCIe um, time 16 slot 
that you can see there. There's actually three similar slots on this board and you can see PCIe X16 next to them. The graphics card has to go in those so you can see where it slots in but obviously I need to take off these back kind of coverings so that the um, the sockets to plug my monitor into is actually exposed. So I'm looking here which screws I have to take out. That's done. You slide out those um, black things and then you just push down on the graphics card. Nice click again and you can see where you plug in the uh, monitors later. Obviously you put a screw in the top to hold it in place and then you give power to your graphics card. Now some graphics cards need um, 8 pins which you would use um, that extra two pin there. Uh, this one needs two times six. And that's that all powered up. Now really this is your whole PC built. Um, this is absolutely everything that you need for a working PC and uh, a gaming PC at that. Uh, you just need to install Windows and uh, get going. And really, you know, it's not simple, but it's very, very logical. It's, there's full instructions, clear instructions for everything you need to do um, and if I can do it, I think you can do it. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye bye.